Hey y'all, welcome to episode 2.4 of the Yarn This Podcast. Today is Thursday, June 4th, 2015, and today's episode is Knitter with a capital K, or is that a lowercase k? It's episode 2.4 because this is my fourth time to try to record, which explains the long gap between the first and second episode, so I hope it works this time. I'm Shama. Jessie's Girl 84 on Ravelry and Instagram. Um, I'm fairly new on Instagram, but I'm beginning to put up more pictures, so there's not going to be a ton from me yet. Today's segments are going to be Girls Just Want to Have Fun, Another One Bites the Dust, The Final Countdown, Danger Zone, We Are Family, and One Week. So let's get right into it. Girls Just Want to Have Fun is my works in progress. Right now, I'm working on two projects. The first one is my stripy sleeves of warmth. I finished the first one, and I'll show you that one in uh, another segment. And this is how far I've gotten on my second one. I'm about four inches in. Um, this is by C.C. Almond. Java Pearl and Ravelry. Uh, if you join her Java Pearl design group, she will send you this recipe for free. Um, I'm using US one and a half needles, uh, 2.5 millimeter, and my Knit Picks metal double points. Uh, the yarns that I'm using, the blue yarn, is my second skein of uh, mustache. Yarn and fiber in the Ritz Sock base, and this is the Tardis colorway. It's the same one that I used for my uh, Rescue Me Chin Boy and Show Me the Star socks, which I'll show you in another segment. Um, the other two yarns I'm using are Pink and a Purple from a yarn shop that was in Kokomo, Indiana, and I bought them last summer when we were there. But the yarn shop called Groovy Girl Yarns has since closed. <clears throat> it's not a very good representation of the purple. Let's see. Nor of the pink. It's much more vibrant. But they both have a depth of color. And um, I'm enjoying knitting with this these yarns a lot. <clears throat> the way I'm getting, <clears throat> excuse me, the way I'm getting my striping is by, uh, you can either roll a dice a single one, or double two if you want, if you want uh, bigger stripes. I'm just going to go from one to six rows. Or I downloaded a dice app onto my phone, <clears throat> and um, I click it every time I want to change. Now, if it's the same, if I get the same number as the row before, I go ahead and roll it again. Or if I get, for example, the pink right there was just one row, and then when I got back to pink again, it did the same thing to me, so I, I rolled it until I got a bigger number. <clears throat> the uh, interesting thing was that this first purple, I got a 6, then a 5, then a 4, and then a 3. It was Every time I rolled it, it was just going down. Anyway, I'm enjoying these, and I hope that when I rec before I record again, I have them done. The other thing that I'm working on is my extension shawl by Natasha Sills from um, Gritty Knits. And this is all I've gotten so far. I'm finally on my second color. Let me put it a little closer and see if you can see the color change there. It's like a teal green with a lot of depth. And then it goes into the turquoise, but I'm only on the second or third row combining the turquoise and the teal. This is a free pattern um, from Natasha Sills, knitted in her Gritty Knits Marinosaurus Worsted Weight. And I'm knitting them on US 10.5, 6.5 millimeter needles. Um, the yarns that I'm using are all... Uh, oops. Gritty Knits. This is the turquoise, 
and it is the Cretaceous colorway. All of her yarn colors have uh, dinosaur or dinosaur-related colors. The purple is Dimetrodon. Mm, not getting good representation of these colors. Washed out. And then the first color, the teal that I've knitted with, this is all I have left of it, and uh, that is coelacanth. <clears throat> I love shawls, and I can never have enough or too many. But the main reason I started this now is because Diane of the Suburban Stitcher podcast is hosting the Round Your Neck Cow with Stacy of the uh, uh, Good Grief Mustache Podcast. Um, anything that goes around your neck at all can be entered. It could have been started before the start date, which was June 1st, as long as it wasn't cast off before June 1st. And this runs from June 1st to August 31st. Anything that goes around your neck, so shawls, scarves, uh, capes, cows, anything like that, uh, you can you can uh, enter into this cow. Um, I can. I'm also going to enter it into the Geeky Girls Knit Summertime and the Living Living is Easy Cow. Um, oh, I, I was going to tell you. That the hashtag for the Round Your Neck Cow is A Y N K A L. And for the Summertime and the Living is Easy Cow, it's G G K Summertime. The uh, only difference with the uh, Summertime Cow with the Geeky Girls is that it cannot be started before June the 1st. So anything I do between now and the end of August, they both end August 31st, will be eligible. For the summertime and the living is easy cow and uh, actually I didn't even start this till June 1st so anything that I knit for the round your neck cow will also be eligible so that's what I'm working on right now um, and I've finished two things since the last time I podcasted the first thing I finished was my rescue me chin boy and show me the stars socks now I know that most podcasters won't wear their socks until they've shown them on their podcast, but I couldn't wait. As a matter of fact, when I finished my first one, I wore it with another unmatched sock because I just couldn't wait anymore. But these are the Rescue Me Chin Boy and Show Me the Star Socks by Cece Allman, Java Pro and Ravelry. She does a lot of uh, Doctor Who inspired sock patterns. She designs for... Um, some Doctor Who sock clubs, and some of her patterns are not released until a certain point after she's actually designed and released them because they, they are uh, part of these sock clubs. I knit these on, once again, the Mustache Yarn and Fiber Ritz Sock Base in the TARDIS colorway. It's the same one that I'm using for my stripy sleeves. Um, the other thing that I finished is not really completely finished, and I, oh, here it is. It is a hoe. It is my first stripy sleeve. And I'll show you what it looks like on. And I think I'm going to get a lot of use of, out of these this summer. My Thursday night knitting group is at Panera and it is a refrigerator in that place. So anyway, here's the first one and I, I love how it feels. It goes down on my hand a little bit. Let's see, there we go. And um, it goes just above my elbow. The only the only thing I wish I hadn't I had done that I didn't do was make them just a little bit looser in the middle so that they could go over like a thin long sleeve t-shirt or something. But who knows, I might knit another pair later in different colors. Now on to the final countdown. These are things that I am going to be casting on in the very near future. 
The first thing is the Red Riding Hood uh, cape that I'm going to cast on for my niece. She's about to be two, and she's the only girl in our family of the, all the grandkids. I was searching for just the right thing, and I found this one. It was published in Simply Knitting uh, Magazine 99 on uh, November 2012. I went to the website and could not find this magazine. So I went to eBay and I lucked out and found it. Uh, I'm going to knit it in a size four to six year. Ed is only going to be two years old, but she's very tall for her age. And so even if it's a little big, she'll be able to get some use out of it, maybe for a couple of winters. We'll see. And it's going to be knit in Aran weight yarn. And my dirty little secret is that when I knit for kids or I knit toys, Sometimes even for myself, I knit out of acrylic. So this will be probably be knit out of, um, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. The magazine should be here in the next few days. It shipped a couple of days ago. So I hope to get finished with my sleeve and get started on that next week because her birthday is July 7th. The other thing that I, I have coming up is... Uh, a Red Riding Hood doll for her to go along with that, but I'm not sure which one I want to knit. I have I've narrowed it down to a couple, and I want to ask y'all's opinion. Let me find it here. They're right here. Um, I want to I want them to be knit and not crochet because I'm not very good at crochet. Here's one of them. It's Little Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. Oh, they're very cute. But the other one is also very cute. And it's from the, um, oh, what was that little newsletter? Petite Pearls. It is now uh, no longer published. And you can actually find this on the uh, Wayback Machine. This one actually comes with the Grandmother, Red Riding Hood, and the Wolf. But I'm not sure which one I want to knit yet, because I'll probably knit the uh, cape first since I want her to have that more. So if y'all uh, would let me know which one you like best, I would be interested. Or if you know of one that I haven't seen yet. Okay, well that's all I've got in um, my upcoming works. The next thing is We Are Family. I've, knit, I've mentioned C.C. Almond several times in both episodes now. Uh, she and her daughter Damaris have a podcast called Geeky Girls Knit and you can find them at geekygirlsknit.blogspot.com uh, They're a mother and daughter. They homeschool. They're originally from Texas but uh, Cece's husband is getting his doctorate in theology and they moved to Edinburgh, Scotland. I'm not going to tell you a lot about them because I'd like for you to go watch their podcast and find out more. But as their name implies, they love sci-fi, they're huge Doctor Who fans, and they like a lot of the same things I do, and they're also big enablers. I have bought all of Cece's Doctor Who sock patterns, and as a matter of fact, uh, I plan to start one of her socks very soon. Um, so, as you can tell, she's a designer, and she has two Ravelry groups. One of them is the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast group, and the other one is Java Pearl Designs, and that's her design group. So, I would, uh, I would recommend both groups to you. They're, they're fun, and, uh, I think you'll enjoy them. Oh, I didn't tell you their names. Cece's name is Java Pearl on Ravelry, and Damaris is Damaris Dash a bit weird, and I'll link all of this in the show notes. The next thing that I want to talk about is Danger Zone. 
in danger zone is going to be when I have problems with my knitting. And this week it actually refers to the title of the episode, Knitter with a capital K or is that a lowercase k? I think we all have times in our knitting where we make mistakes and sometimes they're ridiculous to us. Uh, but we all make them, we all get frustrated, and we all want to give up, maybe on knitting completely, or maybe just on that particular project. And sometimes giving up on a project is the right thing to do. I've done several myself, just quit. But most of the time, I would think all it takes is just giving yourself a break, whether it's for an hour while you go get a bite to eat, Go out and do some exercise, take a nap, maybe give it a day or two or a week or two or a month or two or more. Um, but it helps if we have somebody to talk to that can maybe help us figure out what we're doing wrong or just a sympathetic ear. My friend has recently decided to start an Etsy shop, which I'll talk about in the last segment. Um, but she wants to spin yarn and sell and dye yarn. And um, she's going to make other things to put in her shop as well. But she was trying to spin on her new spinning wheel the other day, and she called me and she said, I'm just so frustrated and I need to talk to somebody who I know will understand. So we talked for a long time, and we got inspiration from each other. We got excited about things. And so it really does help to have someone to talk to. But I'm going to give you some specific examples of things that I've had issues with re very recently. The first thing is the Rescue Me Chin Boy and Show Me the Stars socks. They're not difficult. Cece's pattern is easy to read. And it has a chart, and I'm not a chart person. I do not like charts normally. I think the fact that everybody has their own, uh, their own different little, oh, I can't think of the word. Anyway, the little things they put in the box to tell you what to do next. They're all different, and I have to spend my whole time looking back at the legend. But Cece's, uh, Cece's chart was very easy for me to read. My problem was just getting distracted because once I'd done the repeats two or three times, I had it memorized. And, uh, and it was a 16-row repeat. But when I would make those silly little mistakes, I would get frustrated and I would think, what am I doing? How, how can I possibly have a podcast and talk to people about knitting when I can't even knit this simple chart? But, you know, I, we just all make mistakes. We're all human. And it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with us or our abilities to knit or our intelligence or anything else. Just keep going and trying. And um, you'll get it because I got, I got both of them done. As a matter of fact, when I was knitting on the second sock, my husband and I went on a short weekend trip. And uh, I was almost to the end. And so I knew this pattern inside out. And I kept making little mistakes and having to tink back because I didn't want to just rip back. I don't like to do that on fingering weight. It's too easy to drop stitches and end up having more problems than you started with. So, uh, you know, just different things can cause it. We can be anxious about something. We can be distracted. But it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your knitting. Now, the other problem that I had was with my stripy sleeves of warmth by CC. Again, not her problem. She gave you exactly what you needed to know, but, but because it is a recipe, you don't have every piece of information. The first thing is that you do a twisted German cast on. And it was a little bit of a challenge for me, but I went to YouTube and I found the video, and there are always gonna be several videos of anything you're wanting to learn to do. I always recommend going to YouTube or knittinghelp.com. Um, so I had to do that several times. Even the second time I, when I cast on for my second sleeve, I had to do it a few times before I got it. It was much easier the second time. The good thing is that when you have to learn something new, then you've got something new to add to your, to your, uh, 
repertoire of cast-ons or bind-offs or stitches or whatever you happen to be doing. I love learning new things. I just always, it takes me a few minutes to get the hang of it. But the other problem I had with my first sleeve was because it was a recipe and I did some math in my head and I'm not a math person. Uh, I cast on and I knit probably two or three inches and realized that I had not cast on enough stitches. So I had to frog it. And then I redid my math and I put more thought into it. And um, I got it right the second time. So again, if you have problems with things like that, if it's if a, a, a pattern tells you to cast on so many stitches and you cast it on that number of stitches and you've done your gauge swatch and it still doesn't fit, you might need to make some adjustments. Don't let that stop you. Even if you don't know how to make those adjustments, one of your knitting friends or somebody on Ravelry will be able to help you. So don't let mistakes or things that you don't know frustrate you to the point of quitting. Just go for help and you'll get it all worked out. And then you'll then you will be a knitter with a capital K because you figured it out. Okay. My last segment today is one week and this is my miscellaneous segment. I'm going to go back a bit because there was something I really wanted to talk to y'all about when I recorded it the first recorded this the first time, but uh, but because of all the problems I had getting my episodes to work out, I haven't been able to talk to you about this. So the first thing I want to talk about is Mother's Day. And Mother's Day was, well, I can't even remember when it was now. Um, back in May. We started our day by getting up early and driving to my parents that lived two hours from us and surprising my mom. We showed up at church there. And then my brother and sister-in-law and their three kids showed up. My, neither of my sons got to go, but my husband and I went. Both of my boys had to work that day. But it was a very nice day. We had lunch together. We went out in the backyard and took some family pictures together. And uh, I got to spend time with my nephews and niece as well as my brother and sister-in-law. And it was just a really great day. Then uh, we drove home that evening. And we just went to Jason's Deli for dinner, which is what I wanted to do. And then I got my gifts from my family. So I wanted to show you the things that I got that weekend. Um, the first thing I got was from my son and his girlfriend. They decided to make something for, for me and for her mom for Mother's Day. And they bought these little kits. I think these are little beads that, that you can melt in these little metal frames. So Logan and Ashley made me this pretty little butterfly sun catcher, which I have hanging here on the wall in my craft room. <clears throat> so every time I look up, I can think about the little project that they made for me. And it makes me happy. The next thing I got was cards from my niece and my nephews. And like I said earlier, my niece is going to be two next month. Her name is Etta. And this is the card that Etta drew for me. Look at the artistic ability that child has. And on the inside, let's see, her brother, Caden, who just turned seven, traced her hand for me. And then, I guess to fill up the whole card, he traced his hand for me on the other side. So this was my first card. My second card was from Caden. Caden has nice handwriting. His mom homeschools them. Happy Mother's Day, Shama. I got a, I guess that's a heart and then a smiley face. From my sweet little Caden. And then the last one is from my snuggly boy, Autumn. Alton is eight. Let's see, I'm sorry, I'm using a different camera today. Happy Mother's Day, and he drew a picture of my face, or our face, and then some hearts for me. Alton is, he and I have a very close relationship. 
he's uh anytime we're together he always ends up in my lap and he hugs me and tells me he loves me and Caden loves me too but he's just not as uh, open with his affection and Etta and I have really bonded lately she calls me Dama and she uh she wants me to hold her, and she actually sat in my lap at the last uh, Taekwondo belt test I went to and uh, was learning how to knit a little bit, and we'll talk about that later. Um, so when I got home, my husband had gone out and gotten some things for me. One of the things he got me you've already seen, and that is my TARDIS mug. I've been wearing this mug for two or three years now. Karen from Round the Twist has this mug. Oh, I love it. I love anything Doctor Who. One of my favorite features about this mug is the lid. It keeps my coffee hot longer. And um, since I tend to get distracted with my knitting and let my coffee get cold, and this particular mug is not microwave safe, so I need to drink my coffee as quickly as possible. And then my husband bought me another Doctor Who mug, the Disappearing TARDIS mug, and I'll try to have that on the next episode. He also got me two Doctor Who t-shirts, which I'm not going to show you because they were both those uh, Trim Cut Girl t-shirts, and they just are a little too snug for me. I'm not comfortable in them, so I'm going to have to exchange those. <clears throat> and then the last thing he got me was my big present. And he kept saying, I really want to give you your gift because I'm afraid it's going to become an issue if you don't let me. And I kept saying, I won't buy anything, I promise. This was the day before Mother's Day. I kept saying, don't worry about it. I'm not going to buy anything. Well, the thing was, on the day before Mother's Day, I actually had tried to buy this before he said that. But what he got me was two tickets to the best singer ever Rick Springfield. He's going to be here at the Woodlands Pavilion on September 22nd. We have covered seating under the pavilion and he's going to go with me. Bless his heart, this is going to be his first time to go see Rick Springfield with me and he's not going to recognize me because I kind of tend to maybe scream like a teenager. But I'm very excited. It's going to be, what, three months from now? July, August, September? Um, three and a half months from now. But it, it's given me something to look forward to. So I'm very excited about that. And my last gift, which I don't have to show you here, uh, was a picture that my, my sister-in-law gave me of their family in a frame. And that's already hanging up on my wall so I can look at them anytime I want to. It was a cute little picture from Easter. Uh, on the day that we spent together for Mother's Day, uh, I showed my nephews the podcast. They're both big YouTube boys. They like to watch some of their cartoons on there. They like to watch people playing Minecraft on there. So they were excited that I was on YouTube. And I uh, I got them uh, onto my podcast page. And they, they went back in the back room and they watched it. And Alton came out, and they were really excited. They were excited because my son does the opening music, so Logan, it was Logan's song. And, um, but the funny thing that Alton said was, the good news is, you, the, no, the good news is, you have two likes and no hates, but that's because nobody's watched it yet. And what he meant is not many people had watched it, so nobody had liked it, or not many people had liked it. But uh, I thought that was really funny. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Let me go back over here. Um, the next big thing that we did was my husband and I uh, had the opportunity to fly to Indianapolis on Memorial Day weekend and go to the Indianapolis 500. That's our second time to get to go, our second in, in two years, actually. Now, my husband was, uh, spent the first five years of his life in Indy, 
and his family was always big into it, but they never went to the race. But we got to go last year and this year. We bought shirts. I'll show you, stand up and show you my shirt. And um, we got to go the day before, which is the day that they sh they have the uh, driver's meeting, so you get to see all the drivers. And before that, they sign autographs. Now, uh, if you're not a racing fan, you'll probably be see surprised to learn that there are tons of people out there. So you pick the driver that you're most interested in getting their autograph because you're not going to get... Um, through more than one line. Now the good thing is that one line will take you to a table with three drivers and those three drivers are on a certain row like the first row drivers will have a table together and the second row and I got to get the autographs of Justin Wilson, Helio Castroneves which is my second favorite driver and Tony Kanaan who is my favorite driver and while I was in that line my husband was in line to get Al Unser Sr.'s uh, autograph. Even though he's not a current driver, he had a, they had him set up out there because he was the special guest that day for retired drivers. Then later that day, we got in line to get uh, autographs from some retired drivers. And there were a lot of drivers in there. A lot of them I don't know. My husband knows them all. But... The two that were most exciting were, we got Mario Andretti's autograph, and I'm going to try to pull up the picture and talk. My husband, well, I guess everybody that knows anything about racing knows who Mario Andretti is, and we were able to get a picture of him getting the autograph. And the one that I was most excited about was uh, Danny Sullivan. And if, you were, if you're a girl from the mid-80s, you remember Danny Sullivan because he was gorgeous, and he won the race in 1985. But we also got Lynn St. James, and um, there was another retired female driver, and I cannot believe I can't think of her name right now, but we got their autographs, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Here we go. Here's my husband with Mario Andretti. And um, we got some, uh, let's see here, we got some vans for our Indy 500 shoes. <laughs> anyway, we had a, a really good time. Um, the good thing about this year as compared to last year is uh, we had covered seating for the race, and last year we did not. And as you can probably tell, I am not a sun worshiper. So um, while we were sitting out there last year, I kept telling my husband, it's just so hot on my head. It just feels so hot. And by the time we got back to the car, my bottom lip felt sunburned and felt like I was going to have fever blisters. And sure enough, I did. By the time we got to our hotel, which was probably about three or so hours away in Missouri, my forehead had poofed way out. My lips were probably triple their normal size. And I had a bad, bad sunburn on my scalp. I had a horrible reaction to the sun. I don't know if it was just a sunburn or if it was, if I have an allergy to the sun. Because I almost had that with my lip again this year. It didn't swell up, but it felt like I was going to get a fever blister. However, this year I decided to make my own sunscreen. I'm into making things like my household cleaners. Uh, I use essential oils to make my face cleaner. My um, I'm trying to get more into making my shampoos and things like that. Well, really, I'm trying to get away from shampoo entirely. Um, but I also made us some sunscreen. Now, my husband uh, can put on sunscreen all day long and still get burned because there's a certain chemical in there that his body reacts adversely to. So we both used this and uh, we did not get sunburned this year. 
Now, if you're interested in anything like that, you can PM me on Ravelry, and I'll, I'll give you more information about it. But I think one of the main ingredients was the zinc oxide. It's very white, but when you rub it in, it blends right in, and you don't see the white. It's, it's, the, it's white like the stuff that you put on your nose uh, when you go out into the sun, but this rubs in, and you don't see a thing. So it was, it was a really good weekend, and we're going to go this weekend to the Texas, I think it's the Texas Motor Speedway, and get to see another race. So we're really excited about that. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, I'm in Noma Acres Mini Skein Club. I don't remember if it's three or four shipments, but this was the second one. And oh my goodness, it is so cute. She sent it in a backpack, and inside the front pocket was a list of the colorways, uh, Gnome of the Redwoods, Backwoods Gnome, Toadstool Meadows, Fireflies, and Gnome Knot. And on the back, it tells about this. This is the backpacking gnome, Tilda the backpacking gnome. And she gives you a little backstory about her. There's a little card. She also sent along a little compass, which is just adorable. And in the second pocket are the mini skeins. And honestly, I kind of had it figured out which one was which. I'm pretty sure that this is the Firefly fireflies it's yellow with little touches of green and it's sparkly let me see if you can see that it's very washed out again there's this one which is greens and browns uh, kind of more teal greens and browns and that's probably I would think this was backwoods known then there's this one, which is probably Know Me Not, and it's uh, blacks and grays and some yellow. So yeah, I would think that's probably Know Me Not. This one, I believe, is Toadstool Meadows. It's greens and yellows and blues. And again, washed out. Maybe I should close the shutters next time. And then the last one is Gnome of the Redwoods in the Bungalow Gnome Base. And it's got burgundies and lighter burgundies and some greens. Anyway, I plan to knit some gnomes with this. Well, these will be the hat colors. And um, I have my other shipment, my first shipment that I got a while back that I haven't shown y'all that's already balled up and ready to go to knit more gnomes. But I haven't started those yet. So, thank you. My girl, my son's girlfriend, not my girlfriend, my son's girlfriend just came in and closed the shutters for me. So let me hold up one of those skeins and see if we get a better. No, it's still kind of washed out. Oh well, that's okay. We can always go to the No Makers website and uh, see what her yarns look like. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is the cross stitch that I'm working on for my older son right now. I got it from Stitch Bucket on Etsy. Uh, my son just graduated from college with a degree in criminal justice, and one of his advisors asked him, why do you want to major in criminal justice? And his one word was Batman. So I am making him this cross stitch that says always be yourself unless you can be and I've started the top of Batman and I'll show you what this looks like Let's see oops there we go always be yourself unless you can be Batman so I think he's going to be happy about this it's a secret and he won't see this so um, I hope to get it done pretty quickly. I haven't cross-stitched in years, but I am really enjoying cross-stitching again. And I have some other projects planned. I'm going to knit one that's uh, 
old all of the Nintendo controllers through the years because my younger son is collecting all of the Nintendo systems and trying to get a bunch of the games and he uh, I think he would really enjoy hanging that on his wall and then I have some others that I'm going to do and one will be a uh, stitch along with some girls from my Thursday night knitting group from frosted pumpkin stitchery cross stitches and they have amazingly adorable cross stitches um, but I'm not going to talk about those this week um, I only have three quick more things to talk about and then I'll be done. The next thing is my latest book that I bought is Up, Down, All Around Stitch Dictionary. And I heard about this. Oh, it's by Wendy Bernard. I heard about this from Danny from the Little Bobbins and Nets podcast. And if you're not watching her, you need to. I'll talk about her in another episode. Uh, but she got this book for Christmas. And it's uh, I love stitch dictionaries. I'm not really a designer, but what she was going to do with these is just put them in uh, and make socks. Because this particular uh, stitch dictionary, what makes it unique is that it's got you can have them. It shows you how to knit each um, pattern from the top down, the bottom up, back and forth, and in the round. And not all of them are going to uh, have all of those but some of them will. So it's neat and it has, I haven't been through the whole thing yet, I've just been kind of fingering, slowly uh, meandering my way through it and enjoying it. And I ordered the Star Wars crochet book which should be here, well actually it's on back order. Barnes & Noble doesn't have it right now and I like to buy my books from Barnes & Noble but since they are not carrying it I had to order it from Amazon and they were out of stock. So it should be here pretty soon, I hope. Um, oh, the next thing I want to talk about, my friend Kim, I mentioned earlier, has just started her uh, Etsy shop. And it is called Kim Marie's Knit Knacks. K-I-M-A-R-I-E-S-K-N-I-T-K-N-A-C-K-S. All one word, and I'll link that in the show notes. Kim Marie's Knit Knacks. Right now, she's working on spinning, but she wants to sell some yarn. She's also going to make some uh, bags. But right now, what she has on there are adorable stitch markers. And I got, I bought the first thing from her, which are these ladybug stitch markers. There are one, two, three, four of the ladybugs I believe, or maybe five. One, two, three. Well, I'm not sure. And she also included, included this adorable little turtle. Uh, Marker. Yeah. But she has some Lego heads and some peace sign stitch markers. So I would encourage you to go help Kim, Kim out and look at her stuff. And if you're interested, buy something from her. And the last thing I want to talk about today is my son's girlfriend, Ashley, is wanting to learn to crochet. So she's been working on this little uh, beginner headband, and um, as we all do when we first start, she's getting frustrated. But I think we're going to sit down later tonight and work on this together. And uh, I'm not much of a crocheter, but I can do a little. And I would like to improve my crochet skills, so maybe we could work on this together. So uh, I'll try to have her on with her finished headband uh, in the near future, because I'd like for you all to meet her anyway. So I guess that's about all I had for this week. Uh, hopefully this will be the episode that takes, and I'll be back in two weeks with episode 3.1, and hopefully one and only for episode 3. Until then, come join my uh, Ravelry group. It's the uh, Yarn This Podcast group. You can find me on 
Ravelry and Instagram as Jessie's Girl 84. And I have a Yarn This Podcast group that I've started. We haven't really, nothing's happened yet, but a few people have joined. So come join the group and let's get busy talking. And until next time, knit on.